This is Tom Blair with Inside Colorado Wrestling doing another episode of Boundary to the Boundary, Colorado High School Wrestling. Today's guest is head coach from Lincoln High School, Jake Martinez. How's it going, Jake? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. How's your uh, tournament going so far today at Denver uh, West? Uh, we're, we're doing all right. We're here at the 8th Annual Viking Invitational. Um, I was able to have six kids show up today, uh, which is exciting. You know, we finished last season with uh, three individuals. We've got about 14 on the roster this year, um, male athletes, and then I also have three female athletes. Uh, so we've, you know, grown by about 300%. Yeah, that's a good... Uh, how was your finish last year? Uh, like I mentioned, uh, not as well as we would like it to have been in terms of we didn't have uh, any league championships, uh, we didn't have any regional placers or, or state qualifiers. Uh, last year was a really rough year for us. It was the first year without uh, Coach Rosales. He had been at Lincoln for over a decade, you know, and really built a foundation. Um, so this year and last year were really rebuilding years. Uh, I think, again, as observed by our numbers, we are on the right track, you know, growing exponentially. Um, I have a unique situation where I have a number of heavyweights. You know, a lot of schools have a hard time finding those bookends, um, and I'm fortunate enough to have four uh, 285s. And so three of them are competing today. Um, two of them are still on the championship side of the bracket. And I Do got you want to sublet those uh, heavyweights out to the other teams? <laughs> that way they can fill their rosters? Man, if, if somebody wants to trade uh, a 120 or a 113, uh, I might be up for that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that, uh, but it would be nice uh, at Dual Meets to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, give the wrestling community a little of your background uh, as far as wrestling and also your coaching background. Wow. Wrestling. All right. So I'll be 40 in September, and I've been... That's just a young age. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. I feel it in my knees and my shoulders for sure. Uh, I've been part of the wrestling community for... Probably about 30, 32 years now um, as a competitor. Uh, I wrestled all through middle, uh, junior high, high school. Uh, I was a two-time state qualifier here in Colorado. And then um, I went to Fort Lewis and played college football for four years. Uh, three and a half, sorry, three and a half years. Uh, when I was done with that, I came back and started coaching in Edgewater uh, at Jefferson. I did that in 2008 and have really been in the metro area coaching youth and high school programs um, since then. Uh, I sit on the Colorado USA Wrestling Board. I'm um, the kids director currently. I've had that position for the last three years. Uh, so I facilitate the um, seventh and eighth grade Colorado athletes going to Indianapolis um, for the national tournament. And then I also was on the women's staff for Fargo this year. Um, so, in addition to folk style wrestling, I do a lot of freestyle and Greco in the summers. Um, our club organization goes from February through July. Um, and right now, I think the trajectory is, is high. I, I've got an eight-year-old son and an 11-year-old daughter that are competing both on the local and national level, and so I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. Okay. Let's go back to your high school team. Um, you said you got a couple girls out. Uh, girls wrestling is on the upswing, uh, going through the second year of probation and being a fully sanctioned sport next year with a sanctioned state tournament. Uh, how do you see the growth of the high school girls going forward? I'm going to answer that two ways. How do I see it? I see that it is growing. Um, and the second way I'd like to address that is I don't know that it's growing fast enough. You know, I think that some of my colleagues are uncertain, and so as a result, aren't providing as many opportunities for girls wrestling. And and subsequently, we've got a lot of bookends, right? 
um, when I say bookends, we've got citing the 23 young ladies that I took to Fargo, some, some women in our state that are performing at a very high level. And then on the other end, we've got young ladies that were just trying to get involved into the sport of wrestling and keeping them in the sport of wrestling. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of pages in between. So some of our elite athletes that are coming and competing against young ladies, um, I'm uncertain as to their impact, right? I think that they're exhibiting that we can wrestle at an elite level, uh, but at the same time, we need competitors. Right. I know this year, uh, so far, I've had one major um, high school tournament uh, last weekend, and they had about 190 kid, uh, female wrestlers there at that tournament. Uh, there's a couple girls' uh, high school tournaments this weekend. Um, so it is on the upswing, and you have teams like Skyview has got 23 girls out on the team. Fort Lupton's got 14 girls out on their team. Um, then you have Eden, Eagle Crest is about 13 girls on their team. Denver East almost has a full squad. Yeah, so there is it coming up. Uh, so it'll be interesting how the full sanction goes next year with uh, the 10 weight classes that they have for the girls. Yeah, I, I would encourage more weight classes too. You know, right now our top weight is uh, 225. And, you know, the reality that I've seen both in Colorado and across the nation is that we've got young ladies uh, that weigh more than that. And unfortunately, because we only have those 10 weight classes, those females are being forced to wrestle 285 pound males. Um, there's also some significant jumps in weights. And, and so I, I would advocate for, for more weight classes, uh, to be honest with you. And you mentioned um, some tournaments that are going on right now. I, I was very pleased to hear that the Eagle Crest tournament had anticipated around 150 kids, young ladies, and they are um, over capacity with over 200 wrestlers that, that are attending today. So um, I really want to celebrate what's going on in our discipline with that gender. Yeah, it sounds like it's uh, moving forward, moving up uh, as far as the number of uh, uh, wrestlers, uh, female wrestlers. So that's pretty good. Uh, what does your squad look like uh, moving forward? You said you got a small numbers. What are your expectations and goals for your squad this year? Yeah. Um, so, again, I think we're in that second phase of rebuilding. We are seeing our numbers increase. Um, I am present more on campus this year after school, and so I actually anticipate after the holiday break I may be able to fill my whole lineup. I'm missing a 6, 13. 26 right now and then a solid 95 so uh, my goal is, is to have a full squad um, and I anticipate that happening if not by the end of this season absolutely coming back in the 2020 year uh, do you think the boys division uh, for high school has too many weight classes no no I don't think it has too many weight classes I mean I've got speaking of like my 152 and my 45 pounder they're really competitive um, and, and granted, that's only seven pounds, but in youth, we go five pounds, every five pound increment, and you see a lot more opportunity. Um, now, that's a selfish comment, it, just in terms of I would love to see the sport grow. I do acknowledge that uh, across the nation and across the state, we all struggle to fill our weight classes, right? We joked about how I've got four 285s, but I don't have anybody on that lighter end. Um, so as much as I advocate for more weight classes, it should probably be strategic around those middle weights, those areas where we see a lot of bodies, um, maybe increasing those those numbers. Right, because I know a couple states, uh, Pennsylvania being one, that they're dropping down to 12 weight classes next year. Uh, I'm not sure what their weight classes are going to be, uh, but I know they're dropping down because they had problems with forfeits in their duels. Yeah. Um, but they also may be going with duels having... 12, and then individual, individual tournaments having 14 weight classes. But uh, I mean, so what we're talking about is just trying to stay in tune with, with where we're at, right? This is an over 3,000-year-old discipline, and it I've seen ebbs and flows, right? We have years where our numbers are down, and then we have years where it's back up. Um, I'd like to hope that as a coach, I'm coming generationally from a group of, of young men um, to include like the Nagueros over at Adam City, to include Javier Quintana at Eagle Crest, where 
we're young and we're excited and we're getting kids engaged and so we might be in the trough right now but we're on the upswing I, I definitely see my contemporaries getting more people engaged whether it's it's boys or females um, so it's tough yep I can see why places are, are dropping weight classes um, but I I expect that that's situational All right well I thank you for your time uh, good luck in the season good luck at the tournament this is Tom Blair with Inside Colorado Wrestling.